She-Hulk is fine. You guys are just being dumb. I don't like that thing. Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Durags here. She-Hulk Attorney at Law came out last year and holy the dongles, what a fiasco this show was. Every reviewer under the sun was talking about it and almost everything said was negative. Shoot, even I made a video mocking it and I normally don't touch MCU stuff. Other than maybe Rings of Power, She-Hulk was the most infamous show of 2022 YouTube. But in the darkness came a light for one YouTuber would rise above the others and actually give She-Hulk some positive praise. Cosmonaut Variety Hour. And he's full of poopy. Joking aside, Cosmonaut wasn't actually the only well-known reviewer who went against the grain when it comes to She-Hulk. Doug Walker felt people over-exaggerated how bad the show was, and Angry Joe probably has the most infamous take of defending the first couple episodes. But the difference between Cosmonaut and others like him is either he wasn't actually paying attention to what he watched, or he's being extremely disingenuous. Even Doug and Joe, in the end, admitted the show was bad. I said this in my Elsa video, and I'll say it again. I can handle someone else having a different opinion than mine. Liar! But when that person misrepresents something, it kind of ticks me off. Unfortunately, despite being the superhero lover that I am, I actually know very little about She-Hulk specifically. I read maybe two books on her. Granted, one of those books was the Dan Slott one that the show is based off of, but I've heard rumors that Dan's books are not a good source on this character. Long story short, I'm gonna need some help with this one. Oh yeah! Well, I live in Texas. What? This is a Shady Do-Rags video, so I assume you are about to review a King of the Hill episode, a am I right? Now, before we get started, I realized that I never really made my feelings clear about She-Hulk. Yes, I did that parody, which might make you think I hated it, but I also did the same type of parody on several movies that I like. I'm not gonna say anything revolutionary here. I agree with the popular opinion that this show is trash, one of the worst big budget shows, if not one of the worst shows, period, I've ever seen. With the way it handles Hulk and superhero topics, it's an insult to the superhero genre. And with the way it handles its own climax, it's an insult to storytelling in general. One of the few good things I can say about it is that the act is okay. Despite the horrendous writing and despite how slightly over the top the caricatures were, I did believe most of the cast were who they were pretending to be. And unlike most people, I do actually like the parts with Madison, but only when she's with Wong because I think they make a decent foil. As for me, She-Hulk feels like it was a show that was designed just to piss people off. There are so many convenient things that happen just for the plot to get started, and also convenient things happening just for the plot to get resolved. The show writers clearly don't know the most basic things about the law, there are way too many cameos, and the show goes against its own rules it set up for itself constantly. I already did a full review of every episode on my channel if you want more information. And hey, if you like debunk videos like the one you're watching now, well, I also got a few of those. All right, that's enough stalling. Let's dive into it. She-Hulk is fine. You guys are just being dumb. No, 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 no! Are you really gonna make me start this thing off with an ad hominem? Ugh, I hate giving people ad hominems. Basically, they're irrelevant to the argument. Well, yeah, there's that, but I don't like doing it because it opens the door for people to give me an ad hominem. And I'm sensitive. You have no idea how badly I want to make this the title of this video. For the record, this is my first ever Cosmonaut video, and my goodness gracious, the way he speaks drives me nuts. And no, I'm not talking about the nasaliness. I know he's sick. I'm talking about that almost monotone, I don't care as much as everyone else. I get it, it's a style, and one that a lot of people like apparently, but good gravy, it sounds like he's putting in no effort doing his voice lines. But Shady, not caring about important things is key. I decide what's cool. That's a fact. She Hulk is fine. You guys are just being dumb. You have no idea how badly I want to make this the title of this video. I feel like baiting the reactionary crowd today. You do have to be careful about your titles. I've gotten hate just for my titles on my videos before. I make something clickbaity, and people think that's my genuine opinion throughout the video. I'm not gonna pretend like I hate all clickbaiting or that I've never made a clickbait title myself, and I can't deny that I empathize with people getting angry at a title without looking at the nuance of a video. But there's a fun and proper way to do clickbait titles that both you and your audience can enjoy, and a scummy way to do it where you're just flat out deceiving your audience. What you did is a scummy, deceptive way. Also, it was done in bad faith, much like the She-Hulk show itself. 
For those wondering what he means when he says reactionary, it's basically the left-wing equivalent of when right-wingers use the term SJW. It's just a catch-all term for anyone who disagrees with him. Jar, you can't say stuff like that. Why not? Because a good chunk of my audience is right-wing, including me, you stupid SJW. And disclaimer for those of you who get mad at YouTube titles, no, you aren't dumb for not liking the show. But it's just not that bad. I swear this past month or so has felt like it lasted an eternity. I have to go online and see people complain about the new She-Hulk episode and claim that it's the worst show they've ever seen. Wait a second, I just said that like 60 seconds ago. <gasps> He's talking about me. If you really say that, I think you need to watch more shows. I can see your point if you're talking about reviewers. It is possible that I, Shady Durags, a guy who gets paid to review shows, need to expand my palette more. However, saying this to the average person makes no sense. Most people aren't looking to watch bad shows. Why would they seek out worse ones than She-Hulk? Now, maybe Cosmonaut is talking about reviewers explicitly. The problem is he doesn't make that clear. He just says he's talking about people online and that could mean anyone. And you know, you'd think this was actually a bad show when in actuality, it's just inoffensive. Well, it's inoffensive if you're not a member of the sensitive vocal minority. Ah yes, the sensitive vocal minority. Even if you think all those dislikes underneath your video are just from a sensitive minority of people, then how do you explain Disney's stocks being at their worst in several decades? Obviously, She-Hulk isn't the sole reason, but when you consider that a lot of Disney's other properties are also full of these... Ugh, same talking points. There seems to be a pattern here that we can follow. Also, I'm not sure how a show being offensive is related to it being enjoyable. South Park is offensive, and it's enjoyed by a lot of people. Instead of blaming things on a loud minority, maybe consider that you might just have the unpopular opinion. Which is okay, just don't be a dingus about it. I like X-Men Origins Wolverine, which is a very unpopular opinion. It's here that I can X-Men Origins, really? It's here that I can start talking about two of my major problems with Cosmonaut's video. First of all, it's very antagonistic, which again is a style choice, but if you want people to listen to your opinion, which I assume Cosmonaut does, then you shouldn't attack theirs right out the gate. Cosmonaut doesn't know anything about the people watching his video, but if they were offended by She-Hulk, they must be part of the sensitive vocal minority, even if they clicked on his video to consider a different opinion. Just like the trollish title, the video itself is done in bad faith. The second issue here is that Cosmonaut is both careful and reckless with his diction. According to Cosmonaut, the only people who would find the show offensive is the sensitive vocal minority. However, it was only a few sentences ago that he said a lot of people were calling it the worst show they've ever Ever seen. Literally, the worst ever. I've seen so many people claim that online. A few moments later. And you know, you'd think this was actually a bad show, when in actuality, it's just inoffensive. Well, it's inoffensive if you're not a member of the sensitive vocal minority. Now, it is possible that the various complaints Cosmonaut saw online were a part of the vocal minority he's referring to. After all, we all know a lot of people on Twitter agree on certain topics, but in the grand scheme of things, they are the minority. The key here is to wait for Cosmonaut to define what he means by that statement. Wait, does he even do that? <laughs> well, it's funny you should ask that pertinent question that I wrote in the script for you. Now, I tend not to like the kind of defense that some production teams take with certain projects. The defense that if you don't like our show or movie, you're either a racist or a sexist or you're homophobic. And in the case of She-Hulk, it's no surprise that a lot of people who don't really like women that much don't really like this show. That is as far as Cosmonaut elaborates on critics being a part of the loud vocal minority. So to recap, if you didn't find She-Hulk inoffensive, you are part of the loud vocal minority, which is to say you hate women. That excuse that Cosmonaut just said he hates when studios make. Sure, there's always gonna be a few sexist people who won't like a movie slash show for that reason or another. But where was all of that massive backlash when it came to Alita Battle Angel or Arcane? It's funny because I know what he wants his point to be. He's trying to say that people who hate this show just because it stars a woman exists, but they don't make up everyone who critiques it. But his wording and lack of distinction is both separating and lumping all She-Hulk critics together. 
But in the case of this show, I don't really think there's anything they could have done to avoid Gamer Boy Rage. Um, maybe they could have made it good. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Arcane managed to avoid all of that backlash. Just saying. I was thinking that if you don't want Gamer Boy Rage, maybe don't go out of your way to provoke it, but your idea works too. Like, let's look at the most controversial MCU stories told so far. The ones that caused the most debate online. Captain Marvel and She-Hulk. Are we, are we seeing a pattern here? You mean that they're both awful properties that tried to shoehorn Mary Sue S characters into an already successful franchise, taking the opportunity to berate what the MCU had already established and push gender narratives that didn't fit? Oh no, you mean that they post star women. Your pattern only includes two movies, which are obviously selective examples just to prove your point. Why don't you show the Rotten Tomatoes score for Wonder Woman? Or if you just want to stick to Marvel, Black Widow. I think they would have gotten mad about Miss Marvel too, but they didn't watch it because it has brown people in it. Okay, to be fair, I am guilty of skipping this movie, but that's because I don't care about Miss Marvel, nor does anyone for that matter. This part of the video right here is a primary reason why I hate Cosmonaut's tone. I, for for the life of me cannot tell if he's joking or not. There are those out there who legitimately think that's the reason people didn't watch Miss Marvel. They only watched this because they heard Daredevil was gonna be in it. If he wasn't in it at all, most people probably wouldn't have watched it. I'm not gonna argue that. Well, I am. So you claim that audiences didn't watch Miss Marvel because it has brown people in it. But those same people watched She-Hulk because it had Daredevil in it. Are you claiming that people would have watched Miss Marvel if it also had a fan favorite character make a cameo? I'm just trying to find out your straw man's highest priority here. Also, you neglect to mention that Daredevil was teased constantly, but he didn't show up until episode seven. Some of the people who hate this show just hate it because the character of She-Hulk occasionally says that dudes don't rock sometimes. What? And the word for today, boys and girls, is disingenuous. She-Hulk doesn't just say dudes don't rock sometimes. The show is outwardly antagonistic to the very concept of men. Jen completely craps on Hulk by doing things like implying he's done less work on his anger issues than her because she gets catcalled sometimes. Well, here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me. So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. Like, you know Hulk's backstory, right? Even if you haven't read the comics, saying something like that to even movie Hulk goes beyond insulting. It's just plain stupid, but the show acts like Jen has a point. It doesn't matter if dudes don't rock sometimes, that's just awful writing with a clear agenda attached to it. And that's just one example. Let's go through some more men from the show. There's a POC She-Hulk date. He's buff and reads feminist literature. He leaves her because he discovers she also has a human form that he's not into. Would you have gone on the date if She-Hulk had instead presented as Jennifer Walters? Uh, no. She's, uh, not really my type. But She-Hulk, she's, uh, She-Hulk's incredible. What that extremely attractive man said in there, you can do better. You deserve better. There's the Abomination, who the show decides isn't really the Abomination and is actually just a nice guy who wants to help others. But even with them showing what a nice guy he is, we're still supposed to believe he's someone deserving of 10 more years in prison just for making Jen look bad. Emil. You've been transforming into the abomination. Uh, yeah, I do speaking engagements. Nothing bad, strictly for profit. I vouched for you. After all that, I just want him to hold himself accountable. All right, as your legal counsel, you understand that if you sign this, you go back to prison for 10 years for violating your parole. Yep, it's the comic price I pay for my actions. There's Todd, there's Dennis, Jennifer's other dates, all those retired supervillains, and let's not forget that every member of Intelligentsia was a man. At almost every corner, this show is mocking men just for existing. Now, to be fair, the show does have some men that it doesn't constantly mock. Jen's father, Holloway, Daredevil, Black Namode, Wong. The problem is that there always seems to be an alternative reason as to why these characters are portrayed competently. Take Jen's dad, for example. He's probably the best character in the show, but that's because the writers wanted to make this joke. What's with all the daddy issues? We got Tony Stark, daddy issues. Jen. Thor, daddy issues. Loki, same daddy. Without Jen seeming like a hypocrite. 
See, when a show or a movie has a woman as the main character and she likes to say stuff like that, personally, I don't really care. It doesn't really bother me because I'm normal. Most people immediately care when they're insulted, especially if it's repeatedly done by the same entity. I can definitely buy that you specifically don't care, or maybe you do, but you decide to take the high road, but saying not caring about an insult being normal is stretching it. See, the insults would bother me less if it wasn't in basically every movie slash show coming out nowadays. I know you like to think it's just a loud minority who hate the show, and you're just a normal guy, but that's cope. Symptoms include denying reality, liking modern day movies slash shows, and strawmanning your opponents. There's just no way to avoid getting criticism from dudes like that. They're not gonna like the show either way because you have to make the She-Hulk show a girl boss show or it wouldn't be faithful to the character at all. Buddy, did we watch the same show? Because I missed a part where she was a girl boss. Sure, people would hate this show regardless of... Actually, no, Alita Battle Angel had a female character as its lead, and people liked the first Wonder Woman despite it being a girl boss movie. You saying it needs to be faithful to the character is such a cop out. You made a claim, but you didn't prove anything. So the show has two choices. Make a normal pedestrian boring show about a proud She-Hulk lady that the gamer babies are gonna get mad at anyway or make a show where the strong Hulk lady also makes fun of them in every episode. Haha, <laughs> he really just said gamer babies. How limited is your imagination that those are the only two concepts you can imagine with this setup? We have media with girl bosses that don't rag on guys. When you have to put another character down to make your character more interesting, you're doing characters wrong. And I gotta say, the second choice is a lot more interesting. You literally called the first choice boring. With this manipulative language, of course the second setup is more interesting. Do you not know how much media out there exists of people doing normal mundane things and it's both successful and entertaining? But let's be honest, not everybody who hates this show is a bag. That is still just a very vocal minority. I'm not gonna act like everybody who hates this show automatically hates women. No, no, you said the show is inoffensive to everyone except the loud vocal minority. That means anyone who might find this offensive has to be lumped into that category. This is what I meant when I said Cosmonaut is both careful and reckless with his diction. If you're only paying attention to the sentence he's currently saying, it seems fine, but he easily contradicts other things that were said previously. The dude just spent two minutes ragging on a specific group of people whom, by his own words, is everyone who found the show offensive in some way. This type of inconsistent speaking makes it so that if someone gets angry at that earlier section, Cosmonaut Defenders can say, well, he wasn't talking about everyone, so either you're one of those vocal minorities or you're getting angry for no reason. There's still a lot of normal people who just don't like the show for its own merits, because She-Hulk is definitely not for everyone, and it's not really what you'd expect from a quote unquote superhero show. Oh boy, here I go pointing out manipulative language again. Saying it's not for everyone is a positive statement disguised as a neutral one. It insinuates that it's good, it's just that it doesn't appeal to certain people. However, I didn't even want a superhero show. I wanted a more comedy focused slice of life. Shoot, I would have even taken a rom-com. She-Hulk tries to go slice of life. It just does it badly. Cosmonaut is praising the concept without taking into account the execution. I think it's pretty safe to say that She-Hulk is a slice of life comedy show. Nowadays, a lot of people have a strong aversion to episodic stories. I actually agree with this. It's something I talk about all the time with cartoons. People want more heavy hitting shows like Adventure Time and I'm like, can I just have more nonsensical shows like Gumball? Are you kidding me? Yeah, in the past decade, we've had an increase of shows that you have to watch every episode to understand what's going on, but they're still to this day in the minority. Arrow and Flash were more episodic, with only a few small plot points being brought up every now and then. That eventually led into a story. I've seen the first season of Smallville, and from what I can tell, only the first and last episode of that season had any relevance. Well, yeah, I'm not saying we don't have episodic shows or even that they're dying, but I don't think they're as appreciated as 
as much as the ones with flowing narratives. Shows like Gravity Falls, Breaking Bad, and Game of Thrones set a precedent that high entertainment comes from a flowing narrative, and people want more of that. But let me clarify, while I agree with that statement by itself, I do not think that is in any way a factor as to why people didn't like She-Hulk, which is Cosmonaut's bigger argument. I don't really like how prestige television has melted people's brains into thinking that every story needs to be told the same way and measured on the same merits. I can't even argue with this point. It's way too vague to mean anything proper. I think he's trying to say that modern television has made people expect connected stories, but if that's the case, She-Hulk is not an exception to that. It built up villains and influences that could have had an impact on the MCU. The only problem is She-Hulk pulled the rug up from everyone and said, just kidding, as if not delivering on the thing you promised is somehow a good thing. But Bruce is supposed to return to explain what he was no, doing. No, 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 we don't need to hear any of that. A lot of Marvel fans have come to expect their shows to all be connected and all have some level of consequence for the overall universe. Not everybody can save the world in every story without it getting old. Jennifer literally looks us in the eye in the first episode and says, I am not a superhero. This is a show about lawyers. The point Cosmonaut is trying to make here is that while She-Hulk might not fit into the Marvel mold, it's still a decent show. It's like how people say Skyward Sword is a good game, just not a good Zelda game, or how The Great Divide is a good cartoon episode, just not a good Avatar episode. His argument is that it's unfair to compare She-Hulk to its Marvel counterparts when that's not what it's trying to be. Except A, when you're using the reputation of something that's already popular, you are inherently promising your viewers they will get a similar experience. And B, when you hold She-Hulk up to shows with similar genres like Suits or Better Call Saul, it doesn't even hold a candle. I don't know how he can call it a lawyer show. When the writers admit themselves, they don't know how to write about law. And if you are at all familiar with the character of She-Hulk, you will know that this is exactly what you should have expected from a She-Hulk show. I keep hearing this narrative that She-Hulk is the most accurate comic book adaption ever made. But people just say that because she's a superhero lawyer who breaks the fourth wall. Ignoring her personality and anything else she does. You could just color her blue and have her like chili dogs. And those same people would probably call her the most accurate adaption of Sonic. I've seen people claim that this show destroys the She-Hulk legacy. And I'm sorry, that's very funny. She-Hulk stories are very low stakes and, of course, comedic. Like it or not, this is just about the most accurate and faithful show you could give her. Hang on a second! The comment you put up on screen does not say the show destroyed the She-Hulk legacy. And that comic panel you posted is from the one She-Hulk book I actually read. Even if what you said was true, which it's not, the show focuses on She-Hulk's negative qualities and acts like they're fine. In that comic, however, the whole point was that Jennifer was taking her She-Hulk life for granted and the story was working to make her a better person. Ugh, I hate that I have to defend a comic by Dan who actually agrees with Cosmonaut, but being lighthearted is not the only thing you can judge a She-Hulk story on. The jokes don't always land in this show, but to be honest, do they always land in every Marvel production? And yeah, you could say, well, this is a comedy show, so you know, you'd expect the jokes to be better. And I mean, I do think the jokes are better in this show. It's not laugh out loud funny, but it's clever and cute, and that's kind of all I need. Good for you, but your personal preferences do not a comedy make. All you did was give a subjective opinion. Congratulations, you like bad comedies. It doesn't mean the rest of the world should have to suffer through it. Marvel shows that are focused on making you laugh should not make you go, hmm, that's cute and clever. It should make you laugh. There was not a silent theater in the world when this scene played. I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by- <laughs> And yet that one scene in a movie that wasn't a comedy, but just had comedic elements, brought more laughs than the entirety of She-Hulk, which is supposed to be a comedy. These are very cute and clever storylines that are neatly packed into a clean half hour runtime. Let's pretend I agree with the cute and clever part. Again, not what defines a comedy, but whatever. It doesn't matter how cute and clever they are if they weren't executed well. And to say they're neatly packed feels like just a straight up lie. The writers admit through Jennifer that the stories are sloppy. This is a mess. None of these storylines make any sense. The bad guy steals my blood in order to give himself superpowers. 
Where did you come up with that original idea? But again, for some reason, if you heard the words She-Hulk television show, and for some reason you didn't think it was going to be like this, then yeah, okay, that's fine. You're allowed not to like it. Okay, but what if I wanted a slice of life show, but still think this is crap? The assumptions you're making are just stupid. But again, I can see why some people don't like this middle chunk of the show because it feels very normal. It's not that it's normal, it's that it's boring. There's a difference. I also think the cameos were handled pretty well. This is an absolute bonker statement. It would take an entire video on its own to explain why all the cameos were awful. So I'm only gonna stick to one example. That example being Wong and his second appearance. Why would the master of the mystic arts, whose job it is to stop the world from going into chaos, care about American laws? His opponent was a magician who could barely operate a sling ring. There is no feasible reason for Wong simply not to take charge and just steal the sling ring back from Donnie Blaze. Even if he's worried about getting caught, he's a sorcerer. They show they have no way to contain him. And when everything goes wrong and demons are popping out of portals, who does Wong call to help solve the problem? Not another sorcerer like Doctor Strange, not another superhero like one of the Avengers. He calls She-Hulk, who has made it clear that she is not a superhero. I liked not knowing who was going to show up, and I gotta say, I really liked seeing Matt Murdock for the first time in years. I take it you didn't see No Way Home. And again, I saw some of the vocal minority saying that this show ruined his character. As someone who absolutely loves the character, this is Matt Murdock. If you think this guy is an accurate portrayal of Matt Murdock, then you're admitting that Matt Murdock is a bad character, because this is a bad character. Yes, at first, Matt is the only good cameo in the show. He upstages Jen as a lawyer, which makes sense considering he's dealt with this part of the law much more than she has. However, after that, he just becomes downright awful. He immediately falls for Jen, despite her doing nothing worth falling for. He loses a fight to She-Hulk, despite him being a trained superhero and her being a rookie who stormed out of her training. And he seems almost desperate to reveal his secret identity to everyone around him. Legally speaking, we could say this is an episode of Mania. Temporary insanity is murky, but it's not a bad strategy. Uh, angle this more as a form of traumatic expression due to undiagnosed PTSD. So the devil ninja guy, he, he's a lawyer? And I gotta say, I like the pairing of Jen and Matt. I think it's pretty cute. They have good chemistry. I need you to understand that just because something exists does not mean it's good. Matt and Jen's so-called chemistry is formed in one episode, and it's Matt propping Jen up immediately after she lost him in court and makes fun of him. Jen then upstages Matt in being a superhero, an area in which she has zero experience in and should not be good at, but for some reason is. Despite this, Matt somehow falls even more in love with her. Matt has no reason to like Jen. The writers just decided that he does. People online have really been saying with their whole chest that she has no character development. When the whole show has her struggling with her identity as She-Hulk and shutting out men, and then she gets a whole episode where she goes through therapy and lets herself trust and connect with other men, which then leads to her finding a guy who she really likes. Like, that is character development. You may not like it, but it is character development. Oh, I'm gonna stop. I would have to go through the entire show to prove why that is a load of malarkey. To sum it up though, at the beginning of the show, Jen wants to be with a guy. Sorry, I'm sad and I'm lonely. Throughout the show, she's trying to get a guy to like her. Ah, see, a match. I do not have to be She-Hulk <laughs> to get a date. Now give me back my phone, you're killing me. So like, I meet this guy who actually likes Jen, and that just felt good to know that, you know? And then he ghosts me, and it sucks. And the show ends with her getting a guy to like her. The type of men she hates at the beginning of the show are the exact same type of men she hates at the end, which are men who don't cater to her. It hurts. It hurts because there's so much more that goes into why Jen's character development is just awful, but I don't have time to go over it all. When someone makes a statement like, this person has no character development, they mean that the quantity and quality of the development are lacking. I mean, sure, one therapy session and a boyfriend is technically better than if she just lay down on the ground for 40 minutes and covered herself with dirt. On top of that, all of those things you mentioned happened for extreme 
plot convenience. She never chose to go to therapy. She was just dealing with a case. Her car conveniently got destroyed there, causing her to be stuck on the premises without internet service. The sharing room was the only place she could get an internet connection, practically forcing her to engage with her past foe. After the therapy session, she just so happens to bump into Daredevil, and they both realize they're attractive people and engage in child-friendly activities. If Jennifer's character rubs you the wrong way, you might just say she's a poorly written character, even though... I don't know. I don't think that's really true. She's pretty consistent. Consistency doesn't automatically make a character well-written. Hell, the whole last episode is about the fact that all of these shows and movies forego the character development in favor of a big, dumb CGI battle. No, no, no. That was the worst ending out of anything I have ever seen. The one thing in the entire story that was actually built up was retconned out in real time just to have a dumb fourth wall joke and stupid meta humor that I am so sick of. Also, the ending fight for Go's character development? I don't know what you mean by that. He's trying to make the same point the show itself made in that superhero movies often end on a spectacular fight instead of focusing on the characters themselves. That's why She-Hulk decides the climax is stupid because she preferred the story that was about her learning to live with her powers. However, this point is ignorant and wrong. I'm not gonna vouch for every MCU movie, but the good ones tie in the CGI final battle with the character's development. Take the Avengers. Iron Man didn't redirect the missile because it was cool. There were conversations about how whether or not he was willing to lay down his life for others, to which he kept dodging because he believed himself too smart to be put into a situation like that. Bruce Banner doesn't turn into the Hulk because it was cool. The movie is littered with conversations about how, while the Hulk is a dangerous creature, its powers can be used for good if pointed in the right direction. Thor doesn't get into a tussle with Loki because it was cool. He's been going back and forth throughout the movie about treating his brother like family or like the villain that he is, which results in him getting stabbed. This is a big reason why She-Hulk is so freaking awful. It spends a good chunk of its time mocking superhero tropes when it clearly doesn't understand them. And now I do think lately meta fourth wall breaking humor is kind of becoming overplayed. But like I said, this is very faithful to She-Hulk. She was Deadpool before Deadpool was Deadpool. Context needed. Just because the source material did it doesn't mean you can do it in an adaptation. And even if you can do it in an adaptation, that doesn't mean you did it well. Yes, she breaks the fourth wall. And yes, she was doing it before Deadpool. But her retconning, the one plot point that was actually built up, was dumb. The finale is something that I didn't really expect. And yeah, I do think that this finale could have been integrated into the rest of the show a little bit better. And I still think it wasn't integrated as well as it could be in the show. It does feel like it kind of comes out of left field. And if you're not familiar with the character, it can feel a bit jarring. Oh goodness, finally, a criticism. Though personally, I think there are bigger problems here that have nothing to do with not being familiar with the character. Ignoring what the story has built up and skipping over the climax is not breaking the fourth wall in a pleasing manner. From the very beginning of the series, Jennifer says that this is not a superhero show, it is a lawyer show. And most importantly, she constantly says that it's her show. And she does not budge on that fact. But it's not her show. Everything about She-Hulk relies on cameos. One sticking point, however, that I will say is valid is the CGI. Now, I do think that people who say the CGI is atrocious and the worst thing ever are exaggerating a little bit. But overall, for the most part, I think the CGI was fine, but there are points when it could look better. I personally don't care about the CGI in most shows, but She-Hulk CGI is awful. I have to force myself to believe that thing on the screen is in the scene the show is telling me she's in. And again, as I've said millions of times in this video, you are not dumb if you don't like the show. No, but you are part of the sensitive vocal minority if you find it offensive. But saying it's the worst show ever made is a vast exaggeration. Because honestly, there are Marvel shows on the same streaming service that are worse than this. No, there isn't. All right, that's the end of the video. Let's wrap this up.
Cosmonaut really doesn't make an argument throughout this entire video. A lot of people have told me he's the other side of the culture war spectrum version of the critical drinker. And I'm gonna be honest here guys, aside from the sub count size, I really don't see it. The drinker may not be that academic in his videos, but he at least makes an argument and he's attacking big corporations. Cosmonaut is just going after people who disagree with him. Pretty rudely, I might add. And as we can see from the likes to dislikes under his video, I don't think he's in the majority as he claims. As for me, I don't really care who Cosmonaut goes after and I certainly don't care what he likes or dislikes, but I'm always gonna get ticked off when someone with enough influence is misrepresenting something. And his video completely misrepresents both She-Hulk and the complaints people had with it. His argument boils down to, people don't like the show for these reasons that I made up and I'm going to show no proof towards. And he counters everything by saying, I recognize she-Hulk tried to do something, therefore it's good. A show attempting to do something doesn't automatically mean it did that thing well. Whether you personally like it or not, She-Hulk is very bad for what it is. All right, Jar, you got your cameo video, now get off my channel. Finally, next time, don't take half a year to write one script. Hey, I'm actually trying to entertain my audience, unlike some people. You think these jokes write themselves? Considering your biggest punchline is your reflection, I would think so. Yeah, well, you're just a robot. You know what? You're right. I can see it does take you a while to come up with good material. Call me in six months when you think of a good comeback. You owe me a new brick wall! This has been Shady Durags. So long. Farewell. I have you to say. Goodbye.